بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا والله تعالى أسأل أن يجعل نياتنا خالصة لوجه الكريم I praise Allah and I thank Allah and I ask Allah humbly to raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his kind al and companions. MashaAllah, uh, I will try to uh, uh, speak uh, in English most of the time, but inshaAllah on the screen you will be able to read in Arabic. Uh, uh, the themes and the different messages that I would like to convey uh, to you. First of all, I welcome you all to this blessed gathering and I follow our Sheikh who followed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in saluting and wishing well for the students of knowledge seeking the knowledge the knowledge of the religion is a very grand privilege and merit the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he urged us to acquire the knowledge because with it you straighten your matters, your worldly matters and you prepare for the hereafter and win it insha'Allah. In the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri that a group of people will come to you seeking the knowledge of the religion. Hence, if you see them and meet with them, tell them, Marhaban, Marhaban, bi wasiyati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I welcome you. I welcome you all because you are the wasiyah of the Messenger of Allah, that is the Prophet. He left the uh, good word to take care of the seekers of knowledge. And this includes the great teachers who have acquired the knowledge of the religion through the proper channels and they are entrusted and trustworthy in conveying that knowledge. Hence, I welcome you all, each and every one of you, and I welcome the great sheikhs who are with us today, Sheikh Samir Al-Qadi, may Allah protect him, Sheikh Hadi Fayed, may Allah protect him, and the Sheikh Jil Sadiq. All of them, inshallah, they will be participating in conveying to you uh, the knowledge and the vision of this great association, Jamiyatul Masharia Al Khairiyat Al Islamiyah, the association of uh, uh, the Islamic, our Islamic association, the association of Islamic charitable projects. Just a few weeks ago, we were invited to Germany, Berlin, and we attended a very healthy and fruitful conference, if you will, for the branch managers of AICP in the different countries and in the different continents. Praise be to Allah, we 
are present as the ICP in six continents and we have branches in many countries, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Australia, China. We have a presence just as we have it here in the USA and Canada. MashaAllah, this association is a piece of very uh, uh, nourished and priceless piece of jewelry, if you will. As Shaykh Abdullah al Harari, he came about and he started for us the Association of Islamic Charitable Projects and he laid a platform, a methodology, a vehicle of how to spread the knowledge and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. For those who have lived the era from the very beginning, and I can see several of the people who are present, whom have met early on with Sheikh Abdullah, and they realized how we started putting some Madih functions in the streets of Beirut, attracting the people, spreading the personal obligatory knowledge of the religion, doing that in a trustworthy manner, delivering precisely the knowledge as it was heard all the way back to the Prophet ﷺ. And the work grew until where we are standing today. The challenges are immense regardless of the accomplishments that we have gained over the years. As I said, we are present in many continents and in many countries. We have schools, we have centers, we have broadcasting stations, we have publishing houses, we have circles of knowledge floating in houses privately under the supervision of Al Jamia, we are working and working. Even in the political forum and platform, also we see a growth. We used to have one parliament member and now we have two. For those who follow the uh, politics in general, they will realize that nowadays, despite the uh, crowded problems and obstacles and hardships in Lebanon, the two parli parliament members of AICP are taking the lead in putting on the table projects that will improve the situation in Lebanon. Subhanallah, we are growing. Having said that, does not eliminate the dire challenges that we face as Muslims and as an association. Subhanallah, the continuity and the prosperity of this association is very important because all what this association does is among the most obligatory matters. The people of misguidance, they exhaust every opportunity to spread their falsehood and they use every available arena <clears throat> and medium for them to spread their falsehood. And in the process of spreading their falsehood, they turn to us 
to try and disparage our reputation and to weaken our standing and to abort the effect of the knowledge that we spread so diligently among the people and so successfully. And when it comes to Al-Amr bil Ma'roof and Al-Nahi al Mulkar, ordering the lawful and forbidding the unlawful, we are the tallest by far in doing that. We are the people behind exposing the factions of misguidance. You name it, the Wahhabis, the Tahriris, the Ikhwani uh, uh, groups and other factions of misguidance. Alhamdulillah, we are assured and reassured that we are on the straight path. The challenges remain immense. Just to throw an example to shed some light to you, I think all of the people here who have children, they are concerned about what happens in the schools, in the public schools, when they see that their children are being encouraged to get naked and to look at the auras of the other gender and to accept many matters that clash and conflict with the rules of the religion. This is a challenge that we have to face. Many people, they try to divert the Muslims from the correct path of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah by injecting the poison of blasphemy and what have you. Sheikh Abdullah with his crystal clear vision he taught us that your strength as people working to spread and highlight the methodology of the Prophet والسلام, there are uh, 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 KPIs if you will uh, you know key performance indexes that if you observe them you will be very successful and to remind us all always he left us a wasiya he left us a recommendation to always remember the elements where would help us remain successful and remain continuous on that path. In Berlin, Sheikh Hussam, Rahimahullah, may Allah bless him and protect him. He started by reciting Al-Fatiha and offering the thawab to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also he offered thawab for Sheikh Abdullah and Sheikh Nizar and the Muslims who have uh, uh, met their death times before our time. And he went along to explain and remind each and every one of us with uh, uh, reminding us of the recommendation of Shaykh Abdullah. And in this recommendation, Shaykh Abdullah, may Allah endow his mercy upon him, he urged himself and his students to adhere and cling to the two testifications of faith. Shahadat Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah. What is he what he is telling us with this shahada is that you guys you need to make sure 
that you remain steadfast as Muslims applying the rules and refraining from the prohibitions. The testifications of the faith reflect the science of a tawheed which is the backbone of the correct belief in Islam and also it tells us a message that really when you engage in spreading a da'wah what you need is the fundamental aspects of the religion the personal obligatory knowledge of the religion where you can teach it to others how many of you the old guys have heard or have known that Sheikh Abdullah addressed some people by telling them don't you know the meaning of Laysa Kamithlihi Shay and they would say yes and they would tell them go out and teach it subhanallah so with the little fundamental knowledge one can spread and work in a da'wah of course our work requires challenging and standing up to refute the factions of misguidance and this requires a level of specialization to strengthen oneself to learn the proofs and to establish them in the proper manner this is why he started for us the global university in Lebanon that would teach the religious studies and prepare people as sheikhs among the males and the females earning degrees PhDs and masters and bachelors and inshallah during this blessed gathering of other of ours you will be able to see the last batch that have graduated only maybe five weeks ago and this has been repeated over the years and many of the people whom you know uh, uh, some of them you know them here in Philadelphia for instance uh, Sheikh uh, Amr Shatila he was one of the people who graduated and other people here from the USA have graduated from these universities for both the reason I'm highlighting that is to shed light that those sheikhs who have prepared themselves the job is not entirely theirs to carry out a da'wah but each and every one of us is obligated to spread that knowledge and to call people to Islam using the patience and the wisdom Sheikh Abdullah in his wasiya also he said I urge you to acquire the knowledge of the religion because it is what guides you to happiness in this world and give you the proper preparation for the hereafter and will allow you to be admitted to paradise if you die in a state of Islam and he ordered that we cling and attach to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to adhere to the schools of thought or al madahib of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and to apply this knowledge so that we would spread it and teach it to the people and to order the lawful and forbid the unlawful subhanallah for the past three years several of us myself sheikh samir Sheikh Hadi, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Sulaiman, uh, Sheikh Jamil Halim, many of the big 
names and highly qualified, they acknowledge and they feel that we are falling behind in carrying out this obligation of ordering al-ma'roof and forbidding al-munkar. Subhanallah, we need to finish this stage of dormancy and we need to stand up tall again in establishing what is truthful and to spread it among the old people and the young people, the youth, and to work diligently in the matter of al-da'wah. Also, Sheikh, he highlighted and strongly recommended loving one another for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala and to be helpers for one another and not to be disunited and separated and not to have problems and disagreements and hatred among yourselves. And he highlighted that work and apply the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, that one of you shall not attain the complete belief until one would love for his brethren that which he loves for himself among the good deeds. And as a matter of fact, this is one of the indicators that one has reached the level of becoming a wali if he applies that sincerely. And he said, beware, be cautious of being repelled from one another. Beware and be cautious from preferring acquiring wealth and money and richness on the account of preparing yourselves for the hereafter. The enemies of the religion, they are waiting to ambush you and attack you and they exert every effort to try and demolish that religion. So be, says al-Shaykh Abdullah, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the believer to another believer should be like a solid building that each stone in it supports the other one so that this entire structure will remain intact and strong. And he also said, I recommend and urge you to help your brothers in al jamia the Association of Islamic Charitable Projects. So be assistants, be helpers for them and do not help others against them. And come together, assemble together, remain united together and do not fragment, do not disunite because this will weaken you your strength will evaporate, will diminish. And he says, every person who weakens, who attempts to weaken, the important matter of this and the, the important situation of this association, or attempts to cause a repulsion, to cause people to repel away from al jamia then snub this person, cast him to the side, move him aside and know that he is fighting the religion. And he ended by asking Allah wa ta'ala for the good ending for himself and for his students and he asked Allah to better the deeds of all of us and to have the good ending. And he praised Allah, the Lord of the worlds, and he made a salah on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
Subhanallah, in this message, I will try to highlight some details. This Jamia has a vision and has a mission statement. The reason we have such things because Shaykh Abdullah said in the work of a da'wah we need organization. We do not want lack of organization and uh, disorganized efforts where people would bump into one another and would break the bonds of the Jamia. This is why early on we established a mission statement and a vision. In the mission statement it states that we spread and we teach the creed and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah among the old and the young and to establish institutions, a variety of institutions, so that we can broaden the platforms upon which we use to spread the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and to protect it from extremism and the factions of misguidance. And we do that using as a springboard the school of the astute scholar Al Muhaddith Al Shaykh Abdullah Al Harari. May Allah raise his rank. And the examples that he set for us to lead our way through towards success. As to the vision, this Jamia, Jamia al Masharia al Khairiya al Islamiya AICP, is a religious, cultural, uh, academic, and social Jamia association that represents the voice of moderation, it builds and establishes institutions depending on the genuine donations and givings of the people who are trusting in Al Jamia, those who trust this line and methodology of Al Shaykh Abdullah, so that the accomplishment of teaching the religious knowledge and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and broadening its platforms and protecting it from extremism and perversion. It also works to raise the level of the individuals, whether males or females along the domains of religion, culture, and cultural studies, and manners, and in the social manner, and in the terms of patriotism as well. In preparing these individuals so that they would be the proper caliber and they would have the proper level of awareness. The logo or motto of Al Jamia is the saying of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala that you can see on the screen which means that a group of people they dedicate themselves to acquire the knowledge so that they would go back to their tribes and to their people so that they would impart that knowledge to them so that they would be uh, uh, cautious of the things that might destroy their ending. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said in the hadith that you can see on the screen that whomever Allah willed for him goodness, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala facilitates for him to become knowledgeable in the matters of the religion. So this association really is uh, uh, at this time in particular is like a fortress to which people resort to save themselves from the darkness of perversion and blasphemy. Subhanallah, as you can see on the screen, this is what we do. We teach the old and the young, the school and manhaj of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We spread the judgments of a sharia and the habits and the good manners in society. We prepare and we facilitate uh, for the qualified people to graduate as uh, teachers. We endeavor to correct what people have perverted and have spoiled of the matters of the religion. We attempt to broaden the platforms of Ahl Sunnah. We stand up tall against extremism and against lax presentations. Some groups, you know, they want to fight the religion, they inject lax methodologies. I do, they say, I don't want to pray. Why to pray? Uh, it's okay, don't pray. Uh, pray all together at night. Why, well, yeah, Men and women, they say, you know, uh, they are equal, and so the inheritance divided equally among them, and so on and so forth. So they inject such uh, matters. We stand up to those people. Also, we preserve the Islamic heritage and we spread it properly. We endeavor to spread justice and moderation. We prepare and qualify the individuals in the society among the males and females so that the general benefit would be established. We build institutions that are needed in society and we protect the creed and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Having spoken about the importance of the knowledge that Sheikh Abdullah highlighted, he reminded us and he taught us of the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, in which he told us, you can see on the screen, that on the day of judgment, a person will not move from one station to the next, and there are 50 stations on the day of judgment, until he is asked about four matters. How did he spend the years of his life and how did he consume his body and what did he do with the knowledge that he acquired and about his money where did he earn it from and where did he spend it the meaning as it is clear for all of you. We will be asked about these matters. We are responsible for the knowledge that we have. Subhanallah, if all of us, we decide to stay at home, and let's say we find it easy to work on social media, online and spread the knowledge and leave out, empty the streets. 
Empty the musallas, empty the schools, empty the universities, empty the other mediums that people are interested in. Then guess what will happen? The factions of misguidance are going to fill that void and they will spread their falsehood. For subhanallah al azim we need to be very careful and aware of the level of responsibility and the extent of responsibility that we have on our shoulders. Subhanallah al azim Sheikh told us Antum ala ribat Mathalukum Kamathalil murabit ala thur Mathalukum kamathal Al-Murabit fi sabil Allah, that is the one who performs al-jihad, the rewardability is great. I want you to think of this matter. First of all, MashaAllah, may Allah bless you and protect you all. That you have come over here to enhance your knowledge and to strengthen your knowledge and to review what you have learned before. But don't leave behind being aware that you are responsible people. You are like the soldiers on the boundaries of the Muslim country, protecting them and defending them against the enemies. Such a soldier, is he entitled to leave his post? At will. Imagine if you have uh, the leader of an army that he is fighting a battle and he has his soldiers spread at the borders. And each one of them decided, you know, I want to party Friday night or Saturday night. I'll leave my post. Nobody would know that kind of stuff. This will weaken the work and definitely. What we do is far more important than preserving and protecting the land or your own money or your own wife or your own parents. What we do is more important because if you and I, we got inflicted with a hardship, Losing a son, losing a daughter, losing money, uh, an accident that killed the wife, or whatever it might be. If I'm patient with that, and I did not break the rules of the religion, then I'll be rewardable for that. However, if a person carries a blasphemous creed and he dies as a result, he will be in hellfire forever. For this is the notion of what you are doing in correcting the creeds of the people is far more important for always be recalling that this is an obligation that you need to fulfill once you have the knowledge and the availability of the people are present then you need to reach and teach and spread the knowledge. In Berlin, Sheikh Hossam explained to us a matter which is very important. He said, if you want to work in a da'wah, then it has three elements where 
and when and why Sheikh Abdullah, uh, Sheikh Abdullah taught us and he started that for us where it's on every podium and there are many podiums we have to cover all of these podiums we cannot lock ourselves in our houses or lock ourselves in a musalla and forget about the rest of the world otherwise the enemies of al-islam they will take advantage and they will use the other podiums to spread blasphemy and falsehood this is why i think in berlin or in a private session with uh, with us with me and sheikh rabia and farid and sheikh saif he said, do you know Sheikh Hadi Fayed? I said, yes, he is my buddy, and he is present here, he is sitting with us. He said, do you know how he got attracted to the da'wah and learning the knowledge? I said, no. He said he was interested in martial arts, and we had a team where they train and exercise. And now, Hajj Hadi Fayed, he has a very high level of knowledge, I'm in charge of USA. He is in charge of three countries at the same time, running beautiful operations. For subhanallah, this arena, the arena of people coming together because they like martial arts, is an avenue that you can use to attract people. When uh, you make uh, your dinner activities, potluck or whatever, and people come, you teach them. When you open schools that would prevent, that would produce quality education, and you leave an impact that parents would appreciate, parents will come to you and they want to learn. Even if you start teams, athletic teams, chess clubs, things that people are, are interested in, all of these are platforms that you can use to attract people. We have, we need to do all of these things if they attract people and would open the door for us to reach them, to teach them the personal obligatory knowledge of the religion. So in our vision as AICP, we want to mingle with the people because we know the Muslim who mingles with the people is far more rewardable than the Muslim who does not mingle with the people. In this country over here, we have many challenges. Subhanallah, and I'm looking for growth, more growth in the, the USA. And in that, definitely I need your help and your assistance assistance and your sincere participation, your sincere contribution. As we said, Sheikh Abdullah, as you can see on this screen, that if the people are not organized, then they will not achieve their goals. Likewise, they will not achieve their good goals if ignorant people lead them, if they allow themselves to be led by ignorant people. Sheikh always advised us that do not act on your own because this would bring about major harm and the prophet did say that whoever wants the vastness and the richness of paradise let him stick and adhere to al jamaa because this is the correct way and this is what will make us strong, 
subhanallah and be aware of all justifications or reasons that might be put on the table that uh, uh, might affect the fulfillment of such a goal. Now in the work of ad dawah Sheikh Hussam said we need a tanzim, we need organization as Sheikh Abdullah told us and for the purpose of accomplishing that we need a hierarchy an effective one to be in place now, over the years if you remember at one point in time we did establish directorates and heads of directorates and we put a very rich and well written document to that effect however Lately, Sheikh Hussam, he cancelled that sort of hierarchy. He didn't cancel it, he adjusted it, let me put it this way. And he said, now in each country, I have a person in charge. Like here in the USA, for the time being, I'm the person in charge. In uh, Lebanon, there is a person in charge. In Australia, there is a person in charge, and so on and so forth. He said, you have only one boss. That's me. That is Sheikh Hussam. And so, he pointed his finger, and I think he pointed it at me, <laughs> to explain to others, that you are responsible before me. I'm not going to ask anyone else. You are responsible. You have a direct link with me. When you put down the rules on the ground, then it is Sheikh Hussam who is putting the rules on the ground. There is no other authority in communicating this uh, uh, order of responsibility uh, within that hierarchy. On the end of Sheikh Hussam, he has his own team that would help him in various matters, in finance, in the religious matter, in the academic matter, in the social, and in many other areas. So here in every country, he says, people should not be confused about who to listen to in terms of directives and directions and running the affairs of the Jamaiya. Subhanallah, this is a matter that uh, I can see the productivity of it and I am burdened and the rest of our brothers who are in charge of the different countries are burdened because this is a responsibility. Now it will pass by us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us that uh, uh, Al-Arafat Haq, that is to appoint one in charge, is a true matter, it is needed. However, most of the people who are appointed, they don't fulfill all what is required of them. They do not cover all the responsibilities. And many of them, they would deserve hellfire for that. But this is not a privilege in the manner, wow, I'm the president of AICP in USA or in Sweden or near and there. This is a draining responsibility. And I testify, subhanAllah, all of those managers in the different countries, I don't know anyone who thinks otherwise. They don't want to be in that position. However, this responsibility fell on their shoulders. And now they are responsible for that. And this is why each and every one of them, trying to be intelligent, would endeavor to find a qualified 
replacement for himself so that this torch of goodness would continue subhanallah al-azim now this is a matter that Sheikh Hussam highlighted in, uh, in Berlin and he advised that this person in charge really he has three departments that are very essential for his work. One of them is the individuals and programs department in which we gather the people and uh, we organize them in, uh, in units. We make sure that they are receiving the directives and we make sure that they are attending the lessons that are being provided, whether uh, their level is to have a general lesson or uh, uh, any personal obligatory knowledge or even more uh, advanced uh, courses. And the second element is the religious department, which is very important for us. And the third is the administrative. Alhamdulillah, in all of these three areas, I have capable people here who advise me, and we work uh, together beautifully. I have Sheikh Rabia, I have Sheikh Saif, I have uh, uh, Farid, and we have a newcomer from, uh, from Lebanon in, uh, in the academics who is doing a beautiful job and inshallah you will meet him in a presentation that he will provide and we are working diligently in these matters just we need to set up the way of thinking and we need to raise the level of commitment so that the work of ad dawah would be enhanced. This is where Sheikh Abdullah in his recommendations, in his wasiyah, he talked about at-tahab, loving one another, at-tawadu'ah, humbling oneself to uh, other Muslims, and uh, uh, to have acquiescence and being easily led uh, in the good things so that this work will, uh, will come about. Subhanallah, he directed us. He said the people in charge, they need to consult and seek the opinions of other the people who have uh, uh, valued opinions, people who are capable of giving rich opinions. And he said this consultancy is really a rich material to form a, uh, a mature decision. For if I'm a person and let's say I decided to uh, enhance our school in Florida, which we are doing now. It entails a major operation and it has several elements to it. I needed engineers whom I trust. I needed finance people whom I trust. I needed people in education whom I trust to formulate a mature decision whether to go in or not to step into that project. I'm doing that. And this is very important. I might hear the opinions of all of those specialized people and I would end up thinking Wow, may Allah bless them, but I did not learn anything new. I have already considered all of these opinions. And there is one aspect that was voiced that I did not think of, but it doesn't affect my decision. 
because this person, he looked at it from one angle, I have a much broader consideration to consider. And so I go ahead with my decision. I explain, I would tell that person, your idea is good, but it doesn't apply in the mix that I have, and I would move forward. Sheikh explained that many times between the person in charge and his assistants, there would be a difference in opinion. They differ in opinions. And so my assistant, if he holds a different opinion than mine, how, how do we deal with that? This is a question that Sheikh Hussam uh, uh, presented to Sheikh Abdullah. And as you see in this screen, it says, as well as opinions might conform, many times they would be opposite they would be different. And this difference can be categorized in many ways, either between an opinion which is good and another opinion which is better. And in such a situation, it's easy because you are reaping goodness in, uh, in either way. But in the instances where the person in charge that his opinion is solid and the other person felt that his opinion is correct while the opinion of the person in charge will bring about harm for a dawa and neither of them was able to persuade the other then the course to be taken is for the assistant to accuse his own opinion and he would say well I have looked at this matter from what is given to me what I'm exposed to and what I'm exposed to is much narrower than what the person in charge is exposed to and so Perhaps the person in charge has considered all of these matters and this is why he uh, uh, gave his opinion. And this, to do that, you need to think well of your fellow Muslims. Because if you don't have that, the drive will not move forward. It will become stagnant it will break the efforts, it will delay the achievement of the goals. There are different ways of behaving when opinions differ. And these are, I think, all of us, we uh, we do acknowledge or uh, we identify with these uh, scenarios. In the case of the difference of opinion between the person in charge and his assistant, and the assistant would go along and he would cooperate and understand and he would go along with the opinion of the person in charge and he would defend it and he would act as if it is his own decision and opinion this is one way of reaction that take place a second another way is to differ with him bluntly in his face or he might differ with him behind him
or he would not express. And then he would stay on the margin. He does not participate and he does not work waiting for that work to prove that it had failed so that he would stand up and would point at the person in charge and say, didn't I tell you? And there is a third reaction. The person who only sees his own opinion. And he works diligently to affect and influence the opinions of others so that the work that the person in charge is attempting to do will fail. So that he would prove that his opinion was the correct opinion. Subhanallah, the first way of dealing is the proper one, where the person would go along and cooperate with the person in charge, and he would endorse the opinion of the person in charge, and he would defend his opinion as if it was his own opinion. Alhamdulillah, we the people who are around Sheikh Hussam, the people probably some, some of you know, uh, Sheikh Samir and I and Sheikh Samir al tabush and uh, many other people, uh, we are an executive committee around uh, Sheikh Hussam and many times on the table, not like how you see us over here, we disagree with one another and we give and take and, and what have you. But the end of the session, the opinion after Sheikh Hussam listens to all of this uh, noise and discussion, he would make an opinion that would be in agreement with the opinions of some of us and would be in disagreement with the opinions of some of us. But when, when we leave that room, we have only one decision. And all of us, we endorse that decision. And we defend that decision as if it was our own. This is the unity that we are talking about. This is how you remain solid. This is how you would be like a very solid structure, bonded, well bonded together. And this is the way uh, to go, subhanallah al -Azim. Also, in our work, uh, the responsibility of gathering the people, as a matter of fact, uh, is a very huge responsibility. You know, in Beirut, Sheikh Hussam does not accept for anyone neither Sheikh Jamil Halim or Sheikh Samir or Sheikh Nabil Sharif or anyone actually to assemble the people, to call to assemble the people to address them unless it is by permission and an agenda. What is the address and what have you. And this is how they do it in Beirut. Sheikh Hussam, he made monthly or bi-weekly gatherings in the different provinces of Lebanon. Tripoli, the south, Lebanon, the mountain, and he has a rotation. Sheikh Samir, you address the assembly in Tripoli. Sheikh Jamil, you address the assembly in the mountain. Sheikh Nabil, you address the assembly in the third and the other in the fourth. The following, it will be rotated. And the agenda is preset. What is it that we want to tell the people and which direction we want uh, to move them? If he didn't do that, then you will be in a very bumpy road 
where some people will be directing the people left, the others straight forward, the fourth one to the right, others to the back, that will establish chaos, will weaken the bonds. For subhanallah, here also in the USA, this is what we need to acknowledge. When Sheikh Hussam addressed these topics, it is for two reasons. One of, one of them, the management, from a management perspective, this is very solid, irrefutable. And in the aspect of the hereafter, he fears for himself, Sheikh Hussam, because he is a person in charge, and he will be asked on the day of judgment. So he needs to make sure that the operations are run smooth. Here in the USA, we have many encounters. Some people, they take to the podium, they go off what is the main theme, and they end up making a statement that is threatening, or a statement that benefits the people in the USA but harms the people in Germany, or would benefit the people in Germany and harm the people in the USA, or benefit the people in, in Lebanon and harm the people in the USA. So it's not left for the wishes of every person to call for an assembly and just address the people. For subhanallah al azim this is where also I seek your help, that we do ask permissions. Permissions, I'm not talking about micromanagement. I'm the farthest person from micromanagement, but here I'm looking at it from the angle of being responsible and I'm going to be asked in the hereafter. I cannot turn a blind eye when I see that an assembly took place somewhere and I'm not aware of it. And I have not uh, known what is the agenda or what is the topic or why. For subhanallah, it's easy to inform. Over the telephone, we can inform one another. Likewise, when I told you Antum ala ribat, that you are protecting the borders like a soldier. For one should not leave his post without informing so that contingency planning would take place. Otherwise, you will have empty, unprotected borders and you will leave gaps behind you, which is very dangerous. And subhanAllah, I love it, although sometimes it is not really, uh, yani it goes without saying, and sometimes it really, it wouldn't, it, w it has no bearing, it has no effect. But some of the people who were raised in AICP, they still do that, even in such instances. Anna, when Sheikh Abdullah brought me to this country, Anna, until today, I don't dare to leave Philadelphia, outside Philadelphia, even on a vacation to go to Eagles Mir unless I leave a message with Jumana in Beirut, if you want to reach me, I'm in this place. And so on and so forth. At, at, during the life of Sheikh Abdullah, I would not. I would not go to California for dawah, even unless I tell him and take his permission, and so on and so forth. And this is what we are doing, subhanAllah. Uh, some of the people here, they do the same. Look at this man, Hajj Saad. I'll show you my, my emails. Like within a month, and mashallah alayhi, may Allah give him the strength. He changes his itinerary like 10 times because he's very demanded at work. Hajj, I reserved this flight. I'm going to this place. I'll be back. A day after that, he would, sorry, Hajj, I had to delay and I changed it from here to there. The fourth day, Hajj, this happened, I'll do this. 
هلا انا وي يعني ما شاء الله اي اندرستاند وات هي از دوينغ فسبحان الله العظيم جست تو هايلايت ذات ذا بيبل هو هاف بوزيشنز ويذن الجمعيه ميك شور ذات يو دو نوت فيكيت انليس يو ليف ا وورد سو ذات كونتنجنسي بلانينج ويل بي ميد اند ذا جابس وود بي فولفيلد اتس مور heartbreaking when actually someone would leave the post and he is really very effective and beneficial on that post and to leave it without taking the necessary steps to ensure the continuity of uh, this goodness. Subhanallah, in, in brief, uh, we need to maintain the greatness and to solidify more and more the structure of AICP and to uh, uh, broaden its uh, platforms. And believe me, alhamdulillah, at AICP, irrespective of all the difficulties, all the calamities in Lebanon, all the hardships, the economical and the financials and what have you, I think the barakah and the blessings are keeping us afloat and the accomplishments are tangible and the smart people, inshallah you and I will be among them, are the people who remain on that ship, who remain on that train and keep uh, pushing uh, forward. There is nothing to be afraid of as a matter of fact. Let's be as uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the people are of two types. One type would wake up in the morning and starts his day with the determination for obedience and he acts accordingly and therefore, therefore he's purchasing the happiness of his self to die as a Muslim and to enter paradise. And some people, they choose the opposite. They start their day by planning the old variety of sins and they end up engaging in sinning and they don't obey Allah and what have you. And those people, they are plunging themselves in hell fire. Subhanallah. Al-Amr bil-Ma'roof wa nahi an al-Munkar is something that we need to bring back to our circles and to our ranks. It is not acceptable at all to listen to such perversion and misguidance by many people, many, many people flooding the internet and gathering. Subhanallah, we need to go back and warn people against such perversion and such harm. Inshallah, Sheikh Samir, he will be uh, uh, presenting few refutations just to start this cycle so that we would go back and remember. And here, at least the people in Philadelphia, where I believe we had the most active front in refuting the factions of misguidance, Al-Imam Ali, said there are two angels with the human being that protect him from harm. However, once the death time of the person that is set for him come, then they will leave out that protection. That is the harm and himself they would stop that protection of the harm reaching him. The death time, he says, is a junna, which means it's a shield that is very solid. And what he means by that, that no matter what happens, you are not going to die one minute before 
the death time that is set for you, nor one minute after. For subhanallah, focus on preparing your, yourselves for al-akhirah and focus on acquiring the knowledge and don't get deluded. One has to be smart. This is the intelligent person is the one who judges himself early on and adjusts and he prepares himself for what is after death. I'm among the people. My wife is sitting there, Susie. When we finished working in Saudi Arabia, I went to Beirut. I wanted to start a business with Hajj Omar Dimashqi, rahimahullah. I sat maybe for a year. Sheikh Abdullah would tell me, go to the United States. Sheikh Nizar would tell him, Sheikh, you still need Riyadh. We are putting a structure and he's helping us and that. So Sheikh Abdullah would say, okay. Two or three times until a day came and there was heavy shelling in Lebanon. Uh, the own uh, battle at, at those days. So really it was very close to us. And I locked my wife and the children inside and I had my equipment ready in case somebody would uh, storm into, into the building and what have you. The next day I went to Sheikh Abdullah and I said, Sheikh, this is my situation. I want to take uh, Susie and my kids to Damascus. Uh, this is where uh, my relatives live. And he said, yes, that's very good. And from there, catch a flight to the USA. <laughs> I came to the USA and Hajj Ali here, may Allah protect him, he was leading uh, the scene in the USA and uh, he instructed me to start the ICP and we consulted Sheikh Abdullah and we started the ICP. Shortly after, he appointed me in charge of the ICP in North America. And I stayed. Each time I would tell him, Sheikh, I'm overwhelmed. I said, yes, when you find someone to replace me, tell me. So that we talk about. So we stayed, subhanallah al -Azim. before his death, rahimahullah, by four days or so. I was there with Sheikh Sabir al adi and a few others around him, and he was lying in bed. So I wanted to take a last statement from him that Sheikh, he, uh, do, do you want anything specific from me? But do you want me to do anything any other than the USA and what have you? He looked at me and he said, be where the benefit is maximized. So he gave me a rule. And when I look at myself, what am I going to do in Lebanon? There are, mashallah, astute sheikhs down there who are well established and they have grassroots in the knowledge. I realized that my place is here in the USA. And Sheikh, he wanted this operation in the USA to be successful for the importance of the platform. Even at the time when Sheikh Samir came, I think in 93 or 94, and we were doing his visa, uh, we got uh, his papers in Canada much quicker. But still, Sheikh Abdullah, he insisted on the USA. No, I want the visa for USA for Sheikh Samir. And we got, alhamdulillah, uh, the visa for, uh, for the Sheikh. And this is because of the importance of that platform. Even at one point in time, early on when he sent me, he said, Riyadh, detach yourself from everything back home. If you have a property in Damascus, sell it. In Beirut, sell it. Just cut all ties. No, he wants us to focus on the USA. Even I addressed, he was concerned uh, about our African-American brothers and sisters. He used to ask me, uh, I mean, who do they marry? Do they marry one another? Are there enough? men learned who would marry the sisters. And then he told me, let there be intermarriages. Yani like, 
people who are Arabs marrying Americans among uh, the black community and so on and so forth so that the people, the inhabitants of this country would be very strong in the area of knowledge so that it would be spread and it would be taught. For subhanallah, our work is here and whoever is deluded that he needs to be somewhere else to acquire uh, more knowledge and to leave behind obligatory matters, this is dangerous. Subhanallah al -Azim. Sheikh Hussam, he said, the knowledge that you acquire is that which benefits and not that which you acquire and you compile and then you put it aside. This is why he used to say, don't you know Laysa Kamithlihi Shay? Go and teach it. This is why the knowledge of Al Muhtasar that you have and Al Sirat Al Mustaqim is ample. Many people they need to learn that. There is a lot of work. And those of us who lived in this country, they are experts in the culture, the way people think, and what have you. And so we can produce results if we are active enough. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, I'll be having another lecture. I will elaborate more. If you have any quick inquiry or something that you do not understand, I'll be more than glad to answer. Otherwise, I will leave the platform. Barakallahu feekum.